After several distractions and a few side tracks, we finally returned to the hydraulic brakes. Our Model A came to us with crusty and rusty juice brakes. Several months ago, we tore into the brake system and dissected the situation, and boy, was it rough. The master cylinder was shot, the wheel cylinders were trashed, the lines were clogged, and the whole setup just had us convinced that the only way forward was to tear it all out and replace everything. A few weeks ago, we pulled the old brake lines off the car and schemed up a new plan. Summer has proven to be a worthy opponent, and we've had to mix in family vacations, car shows, parts picks, and a whole host of home projects alongside the Model A build. As the weeks passed, we've steadily worked our way through mounting the kingpins, reattaching the backing plates and braking assemblies, and installing some new parts. With the help of a few of our local parts stores, we've got everything we need to mount the new master cylinder, wheel cylinders, and brake lines today. With any luck, we'll be bleeding the brakes and mounting our tires in no time. We've got a full day ahead of us at the shop today, so let's get to work. We began our work today at the front end of the car. A few weeks ago, we rebuilt our kingpin assemblies and mounted them to the front of the car. To see how we did this, go back and check out episode six in this series. Once the kingpins were mounted, we reattached the backing plates, installed our new hydraulic brake cylinders, brake pads, and springs. The brake cylinders should always face with the larger side to the front and the smaller side to the back. Because the car was already equipped with juice brakes when we bought it, we're going to keep things largely the same when we rebuild them. We will go into more details regarding how we plan to bleed the lines in the two rear wheel cylinders in a future video. Once the two front cylinders were in, we attached our front end brake hoses and began work on replacing the master cylinder. Our replacement master cylinder is a bit different than the one we pulled off the car. This one had a different mounting bolt pattern, so we needed to modify our existing bracket to accommodate it. We replaced all the old nuts, bolts, and washers with new parts, and with a few slight modifications, we secured the master cylinder to the car.
With the master cylinder secured, it was time to run the brake lines. We began by laying out the parts on the table in roughly the way that we would attach them. We'd start at the front passenger side of the car, work our way over to the driver's side, and then run a line back to the master cylinder. From there, we would continue to head back where eventually we would tee off to the two rear brake cylinders. Once we were sure of our plan, we returned to the front of the car to run the line between the two front wheels. Once the front was connected, we began running our next line back from the driver's side wheel cylinder back along the frame to where we were nearly in line with the master cylinder. From there, we teed off in one direction to the master cylinder, and in the other direction, we attached a short piece of brake line to a brake hose, which led to another tee which would then split off in opposite directions toward the two rear wheel cylinders. Carefully bending and directing the lines, we attached the rear brake lines to the car with stainless steel zip ties and ran the lines to the two rear wheel cylinders. With our new lines run and the master cylinder attached, we're just about ready to bleed the brakes and mount our tires. Join us next time as we take you through this process and more as we continue our journey restoring this classic Ford Model A on Epic Restorations.